862 and they can deliver all across Ghana for you. We're coming to you live from the forecourt of the Osu Mall uh, on the Oxford Street. We'll be here for the full week of work and you can always pass by and let's have a conversation, uh, if you will. The Daily Graphic this morning is announcing that the lynching of the 90th, 90-year-old 90 woman, Kafawa chief, arrested in that matter, 13 others on the run. President describes action as barbaric. 34 COVID-19 rapid test kits fail validation tests, according to the FDA. No blanket mop-up after the election. We have already been told that it's only the uh, student registrants who will uh, perhaps uh, have a chance to also do their transfers. And um, MTN is challenging the NCA directive in court. And you know what uh, the Honorable Eslo Usu has been telling the, the MTN and that, well, they perhaps need to bring, bring stuff down so that uh, the, the markets can be liberalized for everybody. The Finder newspaper, Mohammed's track record in office abysmal, according to Dr. Bormia. Financial Services Authority among Mohammed's 10 campaign promises. Nalarigu gets 4.9 million Ghana cities water project. President admonishes residents to protect water bodies. Also, the Ghana Health Service to publish outcome of hydroxy chloroquine use on COVID-19 patients. It's become a very popular drug these days, along with azithromycin. And court quashes UEW Pro VC elections, orders new elections. The Daily Graphic, uh, the Daily Guide, first-timers swarm voters register. And Kafaba chief arrested over witch killing. Nairi endorses four more for Nana. 82 financial institutions collapsed and the NDC and Vota Regional Minister defends COVID-19 measures. Uh, also, the Ghanaian Times, 78 Vota Regional Markets, lorry parks, others disinfected among, amid COVID-19. President condemns lynching of 90-year-old woman at Kafaba. Uh, orders arrest of corporates and health alert hepatitis B birth dose shortage hits the country 147,000 newborns likely to be affected also COVID-19 FDA rejects 34 substandard RDT kits the publisher newspaper is our final one for this morning it says transport fares to drop by 10 percent on august 1 that's uh, on saturday veep slot not for only economists chris Mucci yesterday says uh, as he spoke exclusively to my colleague kamala kluche police arrest kafaba chief over lynching of 90 year old woman and icom's disaster uh, over 45 percent shortfall in revenue comes in a photo of the gra board chairman professor stephen adair and also nick danso a man at the center of it all. My guest this morning, Nana Kofi Opong Damwa, is, uh, speaks for the Energy Ministry. He's also a member of the MPP's communication team. And Honorable Alaji Al Hassan Suhini is um, the MP for Tamale North constituency and also a member of the National Communications team of the NDC. Gentlemen, welcome. Good morning. How are you doing? Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Good Salam. Good Alaji. Wa alaikum salam. Mm. I saw you on Monday uh, <laughs> <laughs> holding the microphone and do your own thing. Right. It you, was you like, missed the job. It was like going back home. <laughs> <laughs> and let me just take the opportunity to thank all well wishers. Uh, I've received a lot of text messages from, you know, many people across the country and even beyond. Uh, after that, uh, you know, epoch event to outdoor the running mate of the, uh, you know, NDC. There were a lot of high points on that night, and I think it all goes to the credit of the organizers of the event and also the you know uh, uh, flag bearer of the ndc and uh, his running mate who actually you know were the toast of the night and uh, i am i am very sure that uh, we'll have the opportunity to look at some of the you know uh, speeches that were presented on the night uh, for example that of the running mate was okay. mesmerizing well. and and, and, and give a lot of hope for, you know, a better tomorrow. Kofi, how's it going? By the grace of God, we're doing well. What's the, what's the occasion? They're not celebrating anything? No. It's just you? Yes. I see. Okay. Uh, what, 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 you have any comments about the event on Monday, the adoring of uh, Professor Jane Nano Kukwajman? I thought we were actually going to be given a chance to have a bite at that because I really have quite a lot to say um, regarding that. Uh, I, I really do not want to comment about the event itself, but as to the substance of it. And if, if, the, if, that's, if that's allowed or allowable, then I would want to take a bite at it. 
I think that the major challenge that the NDC has is credibility. And now you discover that a lot of the things that they are trying to do are either recycled and watered down, or they are basically trying to, you know, scrape things together to make it look like a very viable candidate for candidature, when indeed they don't have anything. Now, it's also very interesting, and I'm not sure if those who are crafting the messages for the NDC are paying attention to how they are coming across, because they are coming across as extremely insulting. Oh, really? Extremely insulting. Who, who, who can you finger? Now, yes. let me just take this opportunity to refer you to a few of these documents that I have here. Now, this was what um, Samuel Okujeto Ablakwa uh, presented to the people of Ghana, his analysis of the MPP's but, but manifesto. Okujeto Ablakwa was on at the Monday event. He never spoke there. No, I'm just, I'm just laying... i on the Monday event. I I'm think, laying... An... I think to be fair to, to the debate, so we need to talk about Monday event. You speak to the Monday event. I'm laying the ground. The reason why I am saying that they are coming across as extremely insulting. Okay. Now, my basis is in this document. And if you just permit me to read from that, remember that he did this as a PowerPoint presentation. But if you go to the website, you find it there. Now, this is a statement he made. Let's refresh our memory. Now, if you do me the favor to read for me. No, I don't read for you. You can show it to the camera reader. OK, I can, I can show it to the camera. I don't know if the camera will be able to capture it uh, as sharply as it is. But what they say here is that nothing is so admirable in politics as a short memory. Nothing is so admirable in politics as a short memory. Who owns that quote? It, it, he attributes it to John Kenneth Gilbreth. Gilbreth. Okay. Mm. And it's in that presentation. Right. I believe that the presentation was put on a website. What's, what's insulting about it? Now, this is it. A lot of the promises that they are making, John Mahama at that event mm. made mention of some 16 things that he would do when he becomes president. Right. In there, the very first point he says is that he is going to ensure that if he wins, 30% mm -hmm. of all the appointments are going to go to women. Mm. I refer you to the 2012 manifesto of the NDC. Mm -hmm. He says if, you, if he is given the mandate, mm -hmm. he will ensure that 40% of all public appointments go to women. You also promised 30%. How, how I'm have not you done challenging 30? that. We're you not have talking done 30%. about. To be so, fair. So what gives to you the fair. temerity? To be to fair. What, so what gives you the temerity to be Johnny, questioning I would, I would, what somebody I would, could do? I would do. want to make my point. You, and, no, hold on. I, let's, let's put you to. You want to ask questions about what somebody promised and didn't achieve. He promised 40% in the past, didn't do it. He's promising 30% now. You promised 30%. You are in power. You have done 13%. So what gives you the moral authority to be questioning what somebody has said in the past? I like the fact that... When you are, have the opportunity to I like do better. The, I like the fact that you are raising issues of moral authority. Right. And I would want you to hold that a bit for me. The question of moral authority, because that is what my entire presentation is based on. Mm -hmm. Now, I made a point that the NDC, I'm not sure that the people who are in charge of the messaging of the NDC are mindful of the fact that they are coming across as insulting. And I'm trying to buttress that with the facts. Mm -hmm. And so if you will allow me to make that point, then I'll no, go ahead no, to you, answer. You go on and make your point, but I'm saying I that... I haven't even made my point. I'm, say, I'm saying that you also promised 30%. Somebody who is not in power says, when I come, I'll give you 30%. So I'm going to answer that. You are in power. You have done 13%. I'm going to answer that. Why are you not able to do 30%? I'm going and to... And why do you think that it's important for you to be questioning somebody's incoming 30%? No challenge. Mm. Can I answer that? Yes. By finishing my point and then answering you? Okay. Good. Now, they promised 40% in the year 2012. Mm. Eight years onwards, they are now promising 30%. Fact. Right. When he promised 40%, he achieved less than 11. Mm. When he promised 40%, he achieved less than 11. Now he's coming back and he's saying, I will achieve 30%. Mm. So you can imagine, the issue is track record and moral authority. Mm. So let's identify that he promised 40 and delivered less than 11. Mm. Now he's even promising 30, a lesser amount. So only God knows, that's one. Again, my point is, they have been bold enough to say that nothing is so admirable than a short memory in politics. So they think we've forgotten their 2012 promise. That's how come they're recycling it and bringing it again. Okay. In the presentation that John Mahama made again, he mentioned categorically that he's going to ensure that a spousal rights bill is enacted. Mm -hmm. It's insulting. Why is it? Because in 2012, he mentioned that if he's voted for, he will ensure that a spousal rights bill it's passed. This is on page 27 of the NDC's manifesto. Okay. Eight years down the line, he's promising exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing that he made. Okay. Espousal rights bill. And I'm saying, 
that you've been bold enough to put it in your presentation mm -hmm. that there's nothing so admirable as a short memory in politics. Okay. What are you trying to tell your, the your people point, of Your point is made now. You've made your point, uh, your, okay. your premise. Now, now answer the question. Now, you promised 30% as well. You have done 13%. Uh, what gives you the moral authority to be questioning another person's promise now, when you it. yourself have failed this to achieve it. your 30% target? This is it. Mm. We made a promise to the people of Ghana. Right. We, are we are executing the promise. As at present, we haven't been able to fulfill it. That's okay. true. Okay. And we are working towards it in a continuous fashion. So do you have I the moral authority to be questioning? Of course we do. Listen, if not... What gives you? You if both not, have failed. If not, mm. then the NDC doesn't even have any moral authority to criticize the MPP. Because on all the things that they are mentioning, mm -hmm. financial services, 82 of them collapsed in your regime. You didn't pay a cent. You are now coming back to say you pay everything after four years. What happened? What changed? Where is your moral authority? And I'm standing on the point you have raised, mm -hmm. that moral authority. Then question John Mahama, everything that he said. And I'd want you, and I'd want you to put that question to my friend here okay. when he speaks on anything. Mm. That where is their moral authority? Where is their grounded? Because remember. So, so you agree that on the question of giving women enough participation, both of you have failed. You agree. Listen, on that issue, clearly, what the statistics are, and I don't know where your 13% is because I have my seen... My 13% figure... is coming from Parliament, for example, comparing with the a few appointments that have been made in government. But that's not the entirety of no, public that has been made as well in other parts of government. But let's, this, let's, this let's, number let's has be been fair. bandied around so many times. But let's be fair to ourselves. So I'm saying that you agree then that on both on, on, that, on that score, to give women a representation, both parties have I agree failed. That, correct. I agree that we haven't reached our thirty percent. Both of you have failed. If your your target is thirty percent and you have done thirteen and eleven, as you say, then you have both failed. I'm coming. I agree that we haven't reached thirty percent. Less than less than fifteen percent, which will be fifty percent, is no, a fail. I disagree with you because I have seen a figure that mm. says nineteen point five percent. You have done nineteen point five. I am saying that I have seen a figure. I cannot even attributed to who. It's unfortunate that you, I had to put my bag down there. I would have pulled the relevant document to match the, 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 uh, the figures I'm quoting to you. But I'm putting it in, 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 on, on record. It that is, I, it's not in any of these documents. These are NDC documents. Ah, okay. <laughs> and it's unfortunate that I had to put my bag of documents down. But what I'm saying is that mm, we have raised 19.5%, and we are still striving to ensure but that... But you can't that, tell me the source of your 19.5%. Oh, but I have it. When I came with my bag on set, you told okay. me that according to no, TV3 standards, yeah. I'm not allowed to bring it on set. So I have, have to take it away. That's okay. why I'm saying it's unfortunate that I have to put that away okay. because I would have pulled it for you. Okay. And I think that, you know, it's, it's only fair because I'm making references to things so right. that you don't challenge me on, on some things like that. But however, going back to my point, I'm saying mm -hmm. that I've seen a document that suggests 19.5. Okay. And also, you made reference to Parliament. And I'm saying that Parliament is elected. Okay. So unless we are going to go to certain extent and agree as a country that they are going to have certain undemocratic practices mm -hmm. to ensure that women are elected, mm -hmm. and I'm using the word undemocratic in quote, then but Parliament is elected, but you protected some MPs to go on a post. Or and, I'm sure that, and I'm sure that Joe out of Weiss, the lot, uh, and I'm so sure many that, others. I'm sure that out of the lot, there are quite a considerable, you know, female. Uh, can uh, you name a the, woman that was protected I, I, who I'm, went on a post? I'm not going. No, to, I'm putting you on the record no, now. I'm not going to can you that. can you have, name any female aspirant I'm not, on the ticket of the NPP Johnny, who was shielded like the Honourable Osei Mensah like the Honourable Johnny, Joe uh, Joe Osei Wusu, like Kujo Pong Kruma, like Kujo like Pong Kruma was protected. Like, well, who contested him? But the fact that someone was not protected that doesn't mean he was protected. So I'm saying name one woman. Anyway, listen, who Johnny, was protected? In, in the fight I to make sure that we get 30% I, women representation. I respectfully decline to answer that question. But I'm going ahead to state that... You don't that have the answer. I, I state, I chose my words very carefully, okay. and I'll stick to that, those words I chose. I respectfully decline to answer that question. But I'm making my point that mm. I have seen figures of 19.5%. They, on record, and mm. I'm stating this, did 11% mm. when they promised 40%. Okay. And now the promise has even come lower. And I just want to underline the fact that and I want you to be as rigorous as you have been with me in mm -hmm. questioning that the issue of moral authority, if that be the case, if that be the foundation, if that be the basis, mm -hmm. what right does the candidate John Mahama have mm -hmm. to say any of the things that he has said? Okay. And on all of the things that he's saying, if I'm given the chance, 
I'll give you his track record, I'll give you the statistics, mm. and I'll show you that, first of all, he's made an earlier promise, okay. which he failed, he not failed to uh, deliver to the standard, mm. as in this case where he promised 40% and gave 11%, or he didn't even do anything at all, mm. as in the case of the spousal rights bill, which eight years later he has mm. come back to promise. Remember okay. that there's a very peculiar issue with the candidate John Mahama, which is he has been at the presidency for eight years. Okay. He has been at the presidency for eight years. Mm. And if after eight years of the presidency, you are still recycling your promises, then the issue of moral right, okay. the issue of credibility, the issue of does he know what he is doing, mm. comes up. And that is underlined. Will it, it will it be fair also to say that he is presently not in power? You have about four or five months to wrap up and that you could you have some time to make up your thirty percent and and achieve some of the promises in the twenty sixteen manifesto which have been unachieved. Is it fair you see, to say to hold you by that strict proof as well? I think that this election we've already declared that it's about track record. All right. So we have a president, Nana Abdudanko Akufuado. And we have a former president mm. who has had a record of eight years in the presidency. Okay. Now, that is what we need to compare. John Mahama's record of eight years... First as vice president. Well, the point... First as vice president. Johnny, be be I'm, true I'm, to I'm, the facts. I'm, I'm, First but as Johnny, vice I'm president. Lied. If you ask me to be true to the fact, okay. you suggest that I'm telling an untruth. No, but you, you're saying that eight years at the presidency. And that is a fact. First as vice president, subsequently as as a uh, president. Does that collate to eight years at the presidency? But let's be fair to the facts. That's not... A, that's a, that's there, was one, there was one instance when he was not the man in charge. But he was at the presidency okay. as the number two. Mm. There's no challenge okay. with that. And unless the NDC is going to tell So me, I like the fact that you put number two. I'm coming. Yeah. But unless the NDC is going to tell me that as number two, he had no influence. He was relegated to the background. Okay. He had no role whatsoever to play. And remember mm. that he himself has come out to state on record mm -hmm. that uh, the late Professor John Ivan Sata Mills mm -hmm. gave him a free hand okay. to engage in a lot of these activities. And I'm saying, having been at the presidency for eight years, mm -hmm. you've come back with a lot of recycled promises. Okay. Things you promised. So you to have do. a problem with the recycled promises that I don't have a problem. Back. I'm saying that the mm -hmm. credibility of the campaign already from the beginning, mm -hmm. they are trying to give it some credibility. But the point is, you cannot get credibility mm -hmm. by not answering the questions. Okay, thank you. Let, let's, started, put, let's put questions to Sweeney. Let's, put, let's put, let's, no, no, I yeah, think, that's I think, the basic. I, okay. Candidate John Mahama, mm -hmm. when he was running to become the uh, flag bearer of the NDC, mm -hmm. stated initially that he wanted to come into office to come and correct the mistakes that he made mm -hmm. during his eight years at the presidency. Mm -hmm. The first thing is that he never told us what those mistakes are, in his opinion. And clearly, today, it's... It, it's suggestive okay. that he's admitting quite a lot of mistakes, mm. but he's not stating them. He's not apologizing to the people of Ghana. Mm. He's rather making it look as though the people of Ghana made a mistake. Okay, thank you. So, so I'm asking about the moral temerity to be making such promises. He's referencing a 2016 manifesto. 2012. 2012 manifesto. And it's, it's, it's important Where? because the 2016 manifesto, they, they didn't have the chance to execute it. But the 2012 2008 manifestos, they actually have the chance to okay, execute great. those. So 40% earlier, and now you're promising 30%. What gives you the, the surety to be able to, do, to be making such promises when you failed in the first instance? Both of you have failed, by the way. They had eight years, we had just four. You know, sometimes I wonder what, you know, uh, creates the palpitations. Mm -hmm and members of the NDC when issues of John Muhammad come, I mean members of the MPP when issues of John Muhammad comes up. Do you notice the palpitations? I, I don't know. The I don't eagerness know what, and the I, I don't excitement know what you're about. to put him down. Mm. And it doesn't work. I mean, it's amazing that my brother will sit here mm -hmm. and talk about credibility in assessing, you know, what happened on Monday. What's wrong with that? I am happy that, you know, the people of Ghana are discerning enough mm -hmm. to understand the approach of the MPP to some of these national discussions. Mm -hmm. They sometimes suggest that the accountability that is required, the bar of accountability that is required of all politicians should always be higher in the case of the NDC, but not to them. And it was amply demonstrated in your banter with him 
over, you know, female representation in government. He did not think that they should be scrutinized at all. He thought that John Mahama in the NDC must be answering questions. He says he's still as, to what, as to what they do, as to what they do in office, it, 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 is, it, is, it, is, it is an opportunity for Ghanaians to have them lead. He says his work in progress. We must be blessed Aside that they and feel Allah. happy mm -hmm. that they are in power. He says his work in and progress. And not to question them. Work in progress. Work That's in progress in the fourth year. And the interesting thing again with their analysis is that when it comes to John Mahama, all the negatives of the NDC fix him, but the positive don't. And they want the people of Ghana to accept it. That all the liabilities of NDC, even from Rawlings, must be heaped on John Mahama. But all positives of NDC, even before it was formed, even under his watch as president, John Mahama should not be accorded to him. Is so, that, for is example, that the understanding you get from no, for example, for example, when under President Mahama, mm -hmm. Bank of Ghana does a hospital that is saving lives. They tell you it's not John Mahama's credit. It is not his credit. But you have collapsed 82 but, financial but, institutions. But, That's what but, Dr. Baumia but, says. But when under President Mills mm -hmm. and John Mahama. Ghana records the highest economic growth ever. Ghana records the first single digit inflation ever. They say it's not John Mahama. So it, the positives in the, of the NDC, even before, I mean, uh, under, uh, 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 the positives of the NDC does not fix John Mahama. Is but it, the negatives, mm -hmm. even before John Mahama joined politics, mm -hmm. Is for John Mahama. Is it, is it deliberate? What do you And see? I've just given you an example of how even when under John Mahama, Bank of Ghana makes profits enough to construct a hospital that is saving lives. They tell you it is an institutional success. Would John Mahama take but the, the under, bullet of 82 financial institutions that collapsed under, under you as but, well? But under, under President Mahama as vice president, Ghana records the highest economic growth ever. Ghana records the single, the first single digit inflation mm. ever. It is not for John Mahama. But then you have but had the 82, of Ghana, 82 financial institutions the collapse people, under you, but the and people now you are here Ghana, promising financial services authority. But the, but the people of Ghana are discerning enough. You know, this question, I am, I am not responding to it because you will change the discussion. He has raised a number of issues I would like to attend to. Okay. But attending to this question, but, but while you are at the, the Bank of Ghana, let, let's let's quickly deal with this one because the question that the vice president has allowed put, to. allow me, the vice president has put to President Mahama. He says like 82 of these institutions collapsed under you. You are coming back to say you will pay them monies now. Why couldn't you pay them back then? Eight years. You see, let's be honest, mm -hmm. and I am happy that people are beginning to look at the facts and the data. Which bank shut its doors to customers and sucked its workers under President Mahama? None. None. All the banks shut their doors to their customers and laid off their workers under Nanado and Dr. Baumia. Fact. No bank. What is also a fact mm. is that when the banks mm. started having problems under President Mahama, a bailout was given to the banks to save them. A bailout Dr. Baumia and, and Nanado have condemned because the banks, some of them according to the report, mm. misapplied the bailout. Right. That is a sensitive government that was not focused on closing those banks. They said they were cleaning your mess. That is a sensitive government that was not focused on closing the banks. The Even though they knew the banks had pr a problem, they did not think the solution, mm. the first solution, was to shut the banks. But they were cleaning your mess, that's what they say. I don't understand. They were cleaning the mess that you created, which necessitated that the banks be consolidated, no, I collapsed, am telling you, whatever I'm telling it is. You, mm. I'm telling you the approach of two governments. Okay. Banks were in trouble mm -hmm. under President Mahama as president. Right. None of those banks shut their doors to customers. Mm. None of them laid off their workers. Okay. Government intervention mm. was to give a bailout. That's right. Fast forward, Nanado and Dr. Baumia are in power. Mm. The banks continue to have those problems. 
and the approach is to shut them down. So let those people who have shut those banks down mm -hmm. not turn around mm -hmm. and blame the previous government for shutting down banks. When the fact is that no bank was shut down. That's the fact. Okay. So moving forward. Spousal uh, bill. <laughs> he talks about it. says it's you know, the, insulting. The, 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 there's more to this banking thing. Mm. You know, and that's okay. why I was saying that you shouldn't, you should, you shouldn't let me okay. move Okay, there. make one more point and then we'll go to the spousal thing. Look, everything that this current government, apart from shutting down the banks, mm -hmm. every decision that they have taken, mm -hmm. they have attributed to an assessment that was done, an assessment report. Mm -hmm. Who did that assessment report? It was John Mahama and his NDC. Mm -hmm. That did the assessment report. Mm -hmm. But the approach mm -hmm. that this government is using to, to, to implement the report, mm -hmm. it's not, wouldn't have been the same report, I mean the same you know, uh, intervention. You're saying that, that the what was recommended used. in the assessment is not what was applied. What was recommended? Not, not. What was recommended hmm. was not a shutdown. Okay. What was recommended? What was recommended? What, what was recommended was to save those banks, clean those banks. Hmm. Cleaning of banks, the way to clean banks is not synonymous with closing them down. Even when they have shown elements of uh, mis fraudulent misrepresentation. Listen, in Nigeria... They have squandered, squandered money in Nigeria to recapitalize them. In Nigeria, mm -hmm. banks were cleaned. It did not lead to a wholesale shutdown like we saw in Ghana. Mm -hmm. In South Africa, banks were cleaned. It did not lead to wholesale shutdown like we are seeing in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So anytime you have to clean banks, don't let the MPP deceive you that the only way to clean banks is to shut them down especially in the manner that they are doing it wicked manner that they are doing it targeted manner that they are doing targeted it. targeted yes who? some of the banks that suffered that had the same problems like prudential bank and others got saved ask yourself why their books why were clean. they did not suffer they said their, their books, books were clean their books were not clean and the people know the records the same reasons they used to shut down the unibanks and others could have been used to shut down banks like prudential bank and others so what, but what, they saved some of them what, why, for why, political why? reasons. We know it in this country for political reasons. So I'm saying that let, let, let them not deceive you mm. that the only way to clean a bank is to shut it down. The way they have cleaned Prudential Bank and others could have been applied to the other banks. Okay. That, is, that would have been the approach of the NDC. Okay, spousal representation bill. Let's, let's talk about that. Uh, well, he raised that. He says that's an insult. There's a difference between... You, you, you promised that and you couldn't achieve it. Now you're bringing it back. You're recycling old promises. Again, that's why I'm saying that it is important that people pay attention to the facts. Mm. The one who talks about credibility, mm -hmm. the government that believes that they are credible is the same government that promised us one village, one dam. Mm -hmm. We know the reports today. But you know the insulting thing? No. They don't even pay respect to the report. They still tout it as an achievement that we must be grateful for and thankful that they came There's to There's no dam in your village? You have, heard, you have heard the reports from the dams. Mm. The villages that have the dams, haven't you? So I won't tell you about my situation mm. that I know. So you would think I'm being biased. But you have had independent assessment of those dugouts that they did. And what did the minister tell you? The minister herself said it. That, that what were we expecting? That 250,000, that's all you get. The minister told us, how Akumsen told us. So, so you know, and these are the people who sit here and talk about credibility. These are the people who promise us one million one constituency. And go and look at the budget. 2017 zilch, nothing was released. 2018, nothing was released. We are in 2019, not up to 20% of that fund has been released. But the vice president insists that the monies have been released. And not those up are the to ones 20 that are being used to, to construct and toilets and, and That is and the credibility holes. I'm talking about. Mm. He has no shame. He has no shame. So he can tell you it's been released, but go check the budget. Not up to 20% has been the released. The budget tells about releases. Hello. I'm just asking. Oh, yes. We the have budget the doesn't speak about releases. It's the finance ministry that will give you how much has been released. The budget uh, tells you. Do you know about budget analysis? Of course. The budget tells you what has been there, what is there. Do hmm. you understand what Are I'm saying? Are you serious? Do you know about budget assessment? Please educate all of us. Fantastic. In a budget, mm -hmm. you have allocated mm -hmm. and, and you have disbursements. Disbursement. Right. 
So go check the budget. Ah, but you're asking us that we are in 2020, not up to... I, honest, I didn't mention 2020. So I stopped at 2019 for a reason. 2017, Get educated, my brother. I stopped at 2019 for a reason. Let's, let's is that my, is so, this my time? So it's your time. So, Nana, is this Nana, my time? Nana, 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 hold, on. Yeah, hold on for me. Nana, he says 2017 zilch, 2018 zilch, 2019 up to 20 Not up to 20% yes. has been released. So that's, that's and what, I stopped at 2019 for a reason what, because as reason? we speak, mm. as we speak, we have the 2019 releases figures in the 2020 budget. All right. Okay. We have how much was what, released what in 2019 right. in the 2020 for. budget. Right. Exactly. Right. So, but I'm telling you that Dr. Baumia is not honest. He's not an honest man. So he can go around and tell you, we have released the money. If you don't go to Accra and take it, the Accra people will take it. Shameless. Shameless. That's the kind of government we have that talks about credibility. That is the same man who told us that in 18 months, no, no village in this country will have a water problem or a toilet problem. He still prides himself as the savior of this country. Shameless. Shameless. And talks are you sit here and talk about credibility? Okay. Credibility. Wrap up Good. for me. Now, now, mm. now, now, now let's let's look at Qu what quickly the NDC is Spousa presenting. Is still not answered. Let's look at what the NDC is presenting. He's, he's raising Spousa a point Rice about spousal rights. Uh, would you that is a recycled promise? Would you quickly want to respond to that and then we'll wrap up and switch? Listen, if you look at the twenty sixteen manifesto of the MPP mm. under President Kufo, two thousand and for 2008. They promised that they were going to turn Nima into high-rise buildings. It's still in their 2016 manifesto. No. That they will, they will turn Nima into high-rise buildings. It's still in there. That's just what, is wrong, what is wrong with making a promise mm. that was not able to be achieved mm. when you have another opportunity? But, is wrong? but, but then oh, when wow. you, if you re no, listen, if, but listen. if you rehash it, the people won't trust you. No, That's no, no. What is wrong? Listen, we have to move on as a nation. We have to move on as a nation. So you have a set of things to do. And like, like, like he himself admitted, you were able to do some. You were not able to do some. Right. You were your 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 tenure was truncated because you had four years to do them. Really, you had four years to do them. Right. Your tenure was truncated, and you are asking for another four years. And you are telling the people that you already know my track record of delivery mm. in A, B, C, D. Now I am adding E, F, G to what I have already delivered. Okay. And then what I was not able to deliver, I want to continue. So you with want it. to continue what you started. What is wrong with it? Okay. What is wrong with it? He why are they asking? Why? Why is there? Why is there a tagline for more? Why? Why is it for more? If they have finished solving our problems, why is it for to more? do more? That's what to do more of what? The stealing, the 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 the, 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 the thuggery, the vindictiveness, for more of what? Okay, thank so, you. So 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 so, Johnny, mm. let us let us be let us be clear. I'm very grateful. Let us be clear mm -hmm. that the government and the governance that we are receiving today, mm. like our running mate said. It's not the kind of governance that this country deserves. We should not be where we are. Okay. As a country, we were, you know, at a better place. Huh? The markets were better. People earned more and paid less for fuel and transportation than they do today. Lives were better. The hopes of doctors and nurses to work in better environments and shock. to provide opportunities Nana for more shock. to be employed. Nana is in shock. How? That you're you are saying these things. Why? Is it not true that we paid more, we paid less for fuel and transportation then than we do now? Is it not true? Okay. Is it not true that market women made more sales than they do now the car and made taxed. more profits today? Car you were taxed. They are still taxed. <laughs> Go and ask them. You <laughs> lied again <laughs> to them in your budget. Okay, thank anyway, you. Thank you very much. You lied thank again you, to them in your budget. Uh, no, no. And you see, maybe a I final just, point. Oh, 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 when was oh, when, oh, when, oh, oh, please, Johnny, check the time. I was watching. No, no, I also checked. I checked the time. I have been time. checking my clock. Listen, you have, you have more time. When he talks about... When he talks about John Muhammad... When he talks about John Muhammad eight years at the presidency... Right. This is a warning and a caution to all my brothers and sisters and countrymen who I know 
look forward, those who of them who are in NPP, mm -hmm. and are looking forward to Dr. Baumia taking over from Nanado, mm -hmm. it is a caution and a warning to you Why? What, what, that they are what, setting the stage to tell Dr. Baumia when he wants to lead the NPP one day that he has already done eight years at the presidency. And if you have how, anything how to do, come by you would have done it. How, so please, how did you my come brothers by and sisters. My countrymen who want Dr. Baumia to take over from Nanado, this is the warning to you. Well, how did you that come he has by done this eight years at the presidency, and so he cannot lead the How MP. did you come <laughs> by this information? I feel sorry for him. <laughs> how did you come by this information? Well, I'm telling you that this is the, this is the, they're setting the stage. That when they tell you that John Muhammad did eight years at the presidency, so he shouldn't go back there. They are telling you that, that when Dr. Baumia ever wants to lead the MPP, mm. Mm. they will tell him that not in this their party, mm. because he has done eight years already okay. at the presidency. Thank you. That uh, is if they ever, thank God you. forbid, thank you. win again in this Thank you very election. much. The facts are clear. Listen, yeah. I'm surprised that a legislator, mm -hmm. a member of Ghana's parliament, the people who are supposed to protect the laws of this country, the laws that technically are made by them, mm. is given this sort of propagandist exposition mm. of the laws that exist. Which, which, which the are... law states clearly mm. that an individual can be president of this country for eight years. That's but, it. But has John Muhammad been president for eight years? He has been at the presidency for eight has years. Has he been president for eight years? That's what, hold on. For you to ask me that question means it is in contention. Have you, has he been president for Johnny, eight you years? you know the answer you, to that question. To, see, doesn't come hold, hold on, allow me. Let's, let's talk about that. Can I finish? Really allow me, allow exactly. me, please. Now here's what, what does the law say? Has what does the law say? Sweeney, so allow me to do my work. Thank you. What does the law say, Nana? <laughs> now, the law says an individual can be president for two terms or four years. That's right. After that, nothing. That's right. Now, my argument, the words I chose mm. was that I feel sorry John Mahama has been at the presidency of this country of for eight years. Now, the fact is clear. Why don't you go to the Supreme Court to seek interpretation? I have, No, hold on. Who has said John Mahama cannot run again? Okay. Nobody has said that. But if, you, if what you just quoted... The four years and eight years. Is it's about the about. track record. And the point I'm okay. trying to expose here is that they want to run away from that track record. Okay. That is why they are now seeking to introduce a new element of someone has said, John, who has said so, mention the names. Mm. And I'm surprised that a member of Ghana's parliament is making these, Ali, you know, these, these points on live TV. That I'm what? sure. What point? May I finish? He's, he's drawing point? inspiration from that yours. What point? That what? So what allow point? me, please. Sweet. Okay, that's what an MP should he make. Tell me what what Sweeney, point Sweeney, allow me. No, it's a propaganda and a lie. Sweeney, allow me. Allow me. Allow him to make his point. Tell then you the understand of him. Ghana the point Sweeney, I have made allow him. MP that Sweeney, shocks you. Allow him. Tell the allow him to make his lie. point, and then you can. No, no, no. I have a flaw. It's just no, allow him to make his point. Allow him to make. Dramatize as if I said something outrageous. It is outrageous. Say, repeat it. For a member of parliament. What did I say? Oh. For a member of Ghana's parliament mm. to, say to sit here and say yes. that when the time is right for Dr. Baumia, yes. somebody will say that he has been at the presidency for eight years and so he cannot go. I mean, That's really? What you are saying. Who said that? That's when, what you are suggesting. Right? Is that your understanding of what That's I what you are suggesting. Johnny, be clear. Please settle this for us. Is that the, what you are the, suggesting? The, no, no, no. The viewer, that Dr. Baumia can decide. leave your party. No, no, Johnny, I, I, I need ask you. the questions. No, I don't no, answer questions. You see, Johnny, you see, I don't answer questions. I'm going to be very clear with you. My job is to ask questions. And I'm going to be very clear with you that if you do not settle this, I don't know. Don't, don't put me in a hole I'm making because a point. I won't enter. I'm making a point. I'm not trying to put you in a hole. Yeah. I'm making a point. This discussion mm -hmm. is because not Because if you do not, not answer elevated. that, it leaves it's questions not in the minds of the viewers. So let the viewers decide. My viewers are very discerning. I, I, I have no challenge with that. But I'm stating clearly hmm, that you should not allow individuals who come on your program to be able to do such things. No allow, one like Allow what? the viewers to be the judges. Like what? I have no challenge. That you are suggesting Dr. Baumia can never leave the How did I suggest that? Okay. How okay. did I suggest okay. that? Well, now, may I, let me please, if I may learn. <laughs> what is clear on this program is that they are Can so, he ever leave they are so um, he will. Oh, now yeah. they are so uncomfortable with the track record mm. of John Mahama that they, they want to run away from the fact that he has had eight years at the presidency. That's a fact. Okay. And if they want and listen. We have John, stated if I clearly. To do that, I we have, have stated told you about, clearly and about always the, the, the positives that we are of always years going to and the negatives. Of okay, me. thank you. But uh, it is uh, a We have just a few minutes. Let's, I understand, but let's if I'll switch. make let's switch. one point. No, no, we have just a few minutes. Let's switch. It's fine. I think we have got on this matter. I want to do. I want to do a public interest. Now you have said your political party. No, I just want to make one point. So if you allow me, I want to introduce. I want to introduce. You allowed him to make his point. So I need to make one point. I took over from you. I need one point. I what, what, what point now here's that? my case. The people of Ghana have seen here on this set mm. that all the issues that I raised, he did not answer. 
Wait, wait, wait. 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 Wait, to 10 percent uh, earlier it had been uh, pushed to 15 percent and then now we're being told that it has to be dropped to 10 percent some of the drivers are charging way beyond uh, 15 percent some are charging 30 percent and all of that but the key question here in another more is uh, our fight the connection with the fuel prices um, what we are paying and then the connection also with our fight against COVID-19 and the president's directive that now social distancing on board public vehicles uh, will become a thing of the past. You know, I've been very loud on saying that the buses did not respect social distancing from, from all the coaches, name them, all the big companies. Now, some, some conspiracy theorists perhaps say that it is because we couldn't enforce it there, we are asking the torturers to also join, and but thereby endangering the lives of many people or all our citizens. Because I don't know who I'm going to sit next to, I don't know if he has the virus or not, and I'm not too sure what my safety will be. What science and data back this decision to so, have the social distancing cancelled on public transports? We've had five months of COVID-19 in this country. So this president has always said that the decision is made on science and data. Okay. In those five months, we've had contact tracing. We've been able to establish how or the areas in which COVID-19 has become, you know, generally a very big threat. Mm. We've established, for example, that in the churches, and, and also not just the Ghanaian experience, but then the African experience, the world experience. In the churches where, you know, people are doing a lot of meetings and all of that, mm -hmm. there are issues. We've also realized through our contact tracing practices mm -hmm. that there are certain areas that we need people to be closer and more careful. So, mm -hmm. for example, if you notice, some of the uh, places have not been opened at all. The beaches, for example, remain closed, whilst other places have been open. Mm -hmm. You would also notice that though restrictions... Including open, uh, open air drinking spots. Open air drinking spots. And the, the, it's very clear. Even the churches have been asked not to use air conditions for these two-hour services. So there's a science behind it. There's data behind can you, it. Can you tell a, a, a man who is drunk to observe social distancing? You see, that's not the issue. The What's issue the issue? Is, if the I drink issue alcohol is, the issue uh, is, and I'm tipsy, the issue is. Can you tell me to observe social distancing? Johnny, uh, no, I'm asking I, I, a question. Yeah, so you need to give me the time yeah, to speak. Yeah. Thank you very much. Now, I'm saying that the science and the data suggest that at certain places, we stand a greater risk as opposed did, to other did places. Did you hear my question? My question is Johnny, if, I, if I drink alcohol and I'm tipsy and I'm wobbly, can you tell me to observe social distancing? And I'm How is answering that, achievable? that. So if you give me the chance to answer that, right. bearing in mind the fact that you've asked me other questions which I would have to answer, which I wasn't allowed to land on. So I'm trying to answer all of it okay. in that gamut. You, you get me clearly. Mm -hmm. So I'm going back to the point of saying that the science and the data mm -hmm. suggest clearly that we are at a greater risk mm -hmm. in certain environments as opposed to others. Okay. The president didn't just say that um, in public transportation, we've cancelled, uh, what do you call it, uh, social distancing, and that is that. He has also said that wearing of masks are mandatory in there, mm -hmm. and also people have to you know, share facilities if, if need be, hand sanitizers among others. So measures are in place, protocols when, when are in place. When we started this fight, and I'm sorry to catch you, but when we started this fight, wearing of masks, washing of hands, wearing of nose masks, use of hand sanitizers where they... Uh, what do you call it? The benchmarks, and then also observing social distancing. Why are we reducing this now that the spread is is becoming bigger? May I, may I disagree with you? That at the initial stages, for example, face mask. The issue of whether face masks were uh, useful or otherwise was up in grabs. Over the months, right. when the data began to arrive, mm -hmm. then we decided that we had to make it mandatory. So what has changed? Because what has changed regarding social distancing? What has changed? Johnny, I'm struggling to answer your question because you don't even allow me to land no, I'm, anyone. I, I'm asking you because you keep going back to I'm the science and data is that, but you, you're not answering my questions. You, you keep asking me questions, I'm answering, but you don't allow me to land. I say, what has changed about the concept of social distancing that so in we this, can't observe it in a so truck or in a taxi? You, you yeah. started by speaking about transport fares and linked it to COVID-19. Mm. I started explaining that it is an issue of science and data. Okay. And I went, I was trying to give examples to back the rationale I was given of mm. science and data. Mm. Then you moved ahead. 
to the other, other protocols. I was attacking the issue of other protocols, and now you have moved, and you're asking me what has changed. Mm. None of these questions has been answered satisfactorily by myself. Okay. And we have viewers who are depending on me mm. to, give me a, to give them answers. Okay. So could you please allow me okay. to make these points and then learn to make, make them snappy. Don't, Thank don't, you very don't, much. Don't over-explain over yourself. I don't, you see, mm. this is also a chance to speak to the people of Ghana, because at the end of the day, remember, this is a health issue. You and I respond are to the, Respond to the issue. I, but we I know want, it's a health issue. I want yeah. to lay a certain basis so okay. that the constant shifting of the, of the, of the goalposts will change. Now, this is a health issue as well, so I need to explain so people will understand. All I want to say is that government has taken decisions based on the science and data. We've had five months of COVID-19. Within that five months, we've undertaken a lot of activities to ensure that, first mm. of all, we understand the science better mm. and we are also gathering the data to inform the decisions that we are making. When I speak of the science, for example, you are aware of the genome sequencing that was done among other papers that have been generated by the worldwide scientific community. Mm. This gives us some basic facts that we can rely on. Then in Ghana, through contact tracing, through the numbers that have been going up and all of, the, mm. all of these practices as well, we've gathered enough data. Mm. Now, it is those, that data and the science mm. that we are using to make the decisions. The, the president has not said that all restrictions are, have been lifted. No. We are practicing social distancing in some places. When it comes to uh, public transportation, for example, the decision has been made, once again, supported by the science and the data mm. that we can fill public transport, transportation vehicles to the maximum capacity mm. with the restriction of wearing nose masks in these public transportation vehicles. That's a fact, backed by the science and the data. Now, the effect of these things, as you have already mentioned, mm. is that the people of Ghana are going to enjoy some reprise as a result of, of, of some of these measures that have been introduced. Some very mischievous persons may want to make the argument that government is pitching the economic What well has changed about the concept of, science, uh, of, of social distancing? The data where, where I'm going to church or to school, uh, I'm not allowed to do social distancing on board my trotro. But when I get to church, I have to sit apart from my Christian brother or Muslim brother and sister, who I know very well, but I can sit too close to somebody in a trotro that I have never met, I don't know, and I could possibly not be able to contact trace. This is what has changed. What has changed? The data suggest that there are certain places within which there are high risk activities and others where there are low risk activities. Now the data So for the church is a high risk area. May I finish? No, answer my question. The church is may, a high risk so, area. So so may I it is not a high risk area. Now may I finish But we observe social distance in the deem, church. Yes and, and in I, the deem, trotro, I deem that question to the church is a low no low challenge. Risk area. I deem I deem that question to be extremely mischievous, but I've explained the rationale behind it. One the time you spend in these vehicles is, is, is one issue. Secondly, the activities that are engaged in, 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 in these places is also another major issue. For example, when we go to church, we dance, we sing, we praise God and all of that. For our own safety, we said that practice social distancing, wear your face mask, wash your, mask, your face and others in there. We've also gone ahead, and remember this, to limit the timing of services to just two hours. Okay. That tells you that the data suggests that the lengthier time we spend in places like that, the more we are at risk as a society. Mm -hmm. We've also even gone ahead to suggest that allow fresh air into the It takes the four road. hours to travel from Accra to Kumasi in a bus. I sit by if, you, I don't if, know if, you. If I may finish. I don't know you. But I don't I think that we you. dance and, 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 and express ourselves mm -hmm. openly within public transportation vehicles. Okay. Remember that the virus is transmitted through, you know, spittle and other bodily fluids. Mm. Now, as you dance, as you do all of that, the risk of you leaving even droplets or whatever mm. around for others to get into contact with mm. are higher. Remember also that okay. within a church environment, mm. you are not stationary. You are free to move around, particularly doing offerings and other, other things. And may I take this opportunity to strongly suggest, and this is my personal You are not opinion. supposed to move around in churches. The offering bowl, may by I, the directives that were given I, by I, Honorable Jamesi, is that the offering bowl are supposed to be positioned at one point. So don't change the rules. Uh, and but that, and can that's you tell it. an individual who is in church mm. not to dance? Can you tell an individual who is drunk to observe social distancing? No, you cannot. But you see, when you go to the church environment, mm. the restrictions, no matter what they are, we have come to agree that they are within a certain okay. spectrum. Thank you. So where, where is the church made... app that was promised by Honorable Esla the, the church app? 
They promised that we're going to have a church app that people had to register to go to church, book their seats ahead so we can, it can help to do the contact I, I, I didn't follow that. You discussion. didn't follow that. A promise church app and not the uh, COVID app tracker that was actually launched, you know, with pump and pump. Can't, can't I ask about church app anymore? No, I mean, <laughs> you should ask about the one that was launched with a lot of money, okay. pump and pageantry, and okay. how it is doing before you even can contemplate on the one that is promised to you. Okay. Anyway, Johnny, if you check your old clips, you will notice that I have said here before that honestly, honestly, and I'm being very sincere. Mm. The, clue the cluelessness, mm. the cluelessness of this government is not as painful as its dishonesty. The cluelessness is not as painful as the dishonesty. I mean, how does a president convince all of us in a beautifully read speech that we know how to save economies and not lives, but turn around to engage in everything with his party leadership. That is against the preservation of human life, all on the basis of political expediency. You are not too sure about what you're saying. Are you not? Are you not? No, 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 no allow him. We don't have time. We have just you one not? minute to wrap up. Are you Sorry. not? Mm. How can you explain the rationale behind the, you know, decision to abandon social distancing in our public transport beyond the political expediency that the government faces from trotro drivers and public transport owners over first? Science and data. How? That's what I'm saying is a dishonesty. So instead of them to even be honest that, look, we are faced with this problem because drivers want to increase fares and we don't want them to increase fares. Okay, we they got to go. They like to you that a sign. We've got to go. Thank you. Why do you call us stupid? Thank you. Thank you very Why much. Do you think uh, we sorry, are sorry, 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 Elijah, I have to cut you. Sorry. Uh, Elijah Alassan Suhini is a member of parliament for the good people of Tamale North constituency and he's also a member of the National Communications uh, uh, Committee of the NDC. Also, Nana Kofi Opon Damwa speaks for the Energy Ministry. He's a member of the MPP communication team. Quickly, let me say thank you to Sonar Fashions in Tamale. 0246590162 for my outfit. And also, uh, quickly, let me also acknowledge our hardworking crew who are out there in the sweet heat of the of Africa, uh, bringing you this live production from Osu John Nipens, Echo Johnson, Maoli, Ebenezer Tete, Mike, uh, Dodu, John, Flagbo, Albert Mensa, uh, Emmanuel Jeto, Frank Autry, Elizabeth Akuto, Harriet Mensa, God knows Pudu, and everybody else who's been working hard to make sure that throughout the week we are getting the strong production from the back end. To, to those of us in front of the camera. We thank you very much for watching. Let the debate continue in your homes. We'll see you after the break.